Let's rewind time back 10 centuries ago to rural China in the Guangdong region. The year is 999, and you are a young peasant boy under the Song Dynasty. Your life is simple. You work with your family every day in the rice fields, mostly surviving into the next harvest, while paying some of your taxes in the form of grain to your local government. Though this life might seem simple to modern people, this is all you have ever known, and great value can be found in your community and work. You wake up early at 5am after a night of socialising with other families of your community. After your usual routine of getting dressed and eating some delicious rice porridge, you leave your home and family for a hard day of work. Your job today is to watch the oxen plough the fields. This is one of the outer rice paddies, which are more fertile but require more awareness. The sun is harsh and beats down on you as you follow alongside your trusty family work animals. Suddenly, the oxen grow wary, stamping their feet and lurching backwards in clear distress. Confused, stepping over some pieces of dead plant and splodging through wet mud, you freeze. To your horror, an ungodly serpentine creature lurches towards you. You go to move, but it is too fast. You feel your tiny body collapsing between its jaws as you get dragged into the irrigation system. Splashing and grabbing onto crops that quickly break, this incredibly strong and unforgiving force of nature has complete control over you. Your own blood surrounds you as you slowly submerge below the waters, bones crunching under the unbelievably strong jaws of the beast. The pain slowly goes as your lungs and body give in. There is a warmth and a darkness. You are dead. Though this may sound like something out of a terrible horror story, something like this really happened to a young 10 year old boy named Zhang in rural China. This tragic event, and others like it, led to the mass culling of hundreds of crocodiles that could be found nowhere else in the world. What were these terrors of the Guangdong? What happened to them? And what can we learn? This video will attempt to cover these animals while going over their complex relationship with the local people and officials. Enjoy. Many writers and artists depict long-snouted deadly reptiles attacking and interacting with people in regions such as the previously mentioned Guangdong, but also the Fujian and Guangxi areas. These depictions are most likely of the previously mentioned crocodile, due to their larger size in comparison to the Chinese alligator which may have coexisted with them. The animals were butchered with bronze axes. Some officials would capture the crocodiles after incidents like the murder of a previously mentioned Zhang, and would execute them in front of farm communities. The bitter approach and hatred of these crocodilians was not found by every person. One poet, Han Yu, sacrificed a pig and goat to the creatures terrorising his local area, saying that if they were to come back, they would be killed with poison arrows. Though I'm sure this was a very effective tactic, later incidents show the crocodiles were still a huge nuisance, but the reasoning of Han Yu would not be forgotten about. Officials began to crack down further, with one particular disaster in the 1400s leading to calcium oxide being put in the waters to kill the animals. I'm sure that made the rice that year extra nourishing, but the huge massacres of these animals would lead to them eventually disappearing in the late 17th century. They were almost forgotten about outside of ancient Chinese literature and the occasional abnormally large crocodilian bone. That was all until some researchers in 2022 released a study analysing bones collected by scientists in the 60s and 70s. And who better to name it in honour of than our reasonable and kind-hearted poet Han Yu. So with that, the new genus name Han Yu Sucus was created. Whether or not Han Yu would appreciate a species that ate local children being named after him is completely up in the air. So far we have been describing the Han Yu Sucus as a crocodile, a deception on my part, as instead this animal would find itself closer related to the Garials and Tommy Stomas of neighbouring India and Indonesia. It is thought to be closer related to the Tommy Stomas than it is to the Garials, with this being evident in their similar snouts, large bodies and more aggressive nature. If this animal was alive today, it would likely be the largest member of Garbialidae, growing up to 6 metres in length according to some estimates. 
though 5 meters is more realistic as an average. Though we do have some examples of false gharials attacking humans, the Hanyu Sukus seems to have been far more aggressive, with potentially hundreds of accounts of boat attacks, human attacks, and livestock attacks. This may be due to their more competitive habitat, or due to external pressures due to human activity. The gharials of today have a pottery-like bulbous nose bump, used for making buzzing noises and attracting mates. Though whether Hanyusukus had this is unlikely, its nasal bones do show some adaptations that imply vocalization. It is pretty clear why the officials of the many dynasties of China would want these animals dead. They ate people and caused chaos to agriculture. The explanation for this aggression being on habitat destruction would really mean nothing to officials, and due to them eating children, hundreds of Hanyusukus were killed. We find examples of the head of a Hanyusukus being chopped off and dried by Bronze Age peoples. And as civilization developed, they found new and more efficient ways to murder the animals. As previously mentioned, hundreds could be killed by introducing calcium oxide to the waters. Soldiers could be mobilized to trap and kill these animals as well. Though a few reports exist in the 1400s, their steady decline towards extinction seemed inevitable. Fortunately, the last report was not violent, and was by some people on Hainan Island, who wrote of sacrificing animals and wine to the last of the Hanyusukas. These animals were likely not monsters. The expansion of agriculture into South China likely was a determining factor in why they attacked humans. Fish living in rice patches meant the Hanyusukas had to go further into human territory for prey. Suddenly, the freshwater environments that Hanyusukas thrived in came under threat of drainage and integration into irrigation systems. And with this, vulnerable cattle and people were easy prey items. Villainizing the Hanyusukas may make a more interesting story, but they were animals, not monsters. And the loss of them is tragic. Though we have lost the Hanyusukas, we still have two species of Garvialids alive today, and they are both under threat. We must work hard to preserve these animals and make sure they don't end up like their Chinese cousins. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's been really nice to return to the series after the more successful content format of uh, island videos. I should now be back with a few more uploads, though my education will likely disrupt the content I'm making. And, you know, content is going to become sparse because I'm going through A-levels at the minute. I hope you've all enjoyed this, and thank you to my Patreon supporters. That was Mr. Top Hat, Toby Cover, Goji Berry, Ruby B, and Prisma. Much appreciated, and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye for now.